Hey, what is up guys and welcome back for another God 4 build video. And today we're looking at none other than Bulwark, one of the Valor plates which I'm always super excited to play with. He received some really interesting shards in the Exalted update and they were a bit tricky to use. But nonetheless, Bulwark is still a real powerhouse. It took some time to get his build right but I've finally made a really enjoyable build that can do any content in the game. If you guys enjoyed the video, a like would be really appreciated. If you would like to see more of my builds, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. With that, let's get right into the build. Alrighty, so the first thing we really need to look at is Bulwark's new shards. His shards almost always drain his health for damage, which makes Bulwark feel a lot like a double-edged sword. It can sometimes work in your favour with the high damage output, and most other times you could get killed super easily because of the constant health drain. With that, having good survivability was most important. The shards will provide all the necessary damage boosts that he will need. So with that, the first shard we use is the Blood Rage technique. During Rampage, we'll get bonus physical damage and bleed power. On top of that, during Rampage, we'll also get the ability to deal physical damage and inflict bleed with our weapon techniques and polarity attacks as well. This will play an important role as I will explain it more when we look at our weapons. The second shard we are using and Bulwark's most powerful shard is the Wall of the Unbroken. This is a shard that makes and also breaks Bulwark. While you are polarized, you will gain 20% damage per second while also losing 3% health per second as well. This effect will last for around 30 to 33 seconds before the ability will wear off or if your health drops below 10%. It will not last indefinitely even if you keep regening your health. Towards the end of the ability's duration, you can reach up to 600% bonus damage, which is totally insane. If you consume bleed while you're polarized, you can restore your health, but let's face it, I and probably you all have had enough of consume, so we will have a lot of other ways to heal. With that, let's have a look at the weapons. This is where the real fun begins. You can just about use any weapon you like, anything and I mean just about any weapon you can make this build work. Dual blades, long swords, great swords, hammers. Pole arms would probably be the one that I would least consider, but it can still work. Still, I have a few suggestions for you all. Dual blades work best if you really like to dish out really fast damage and being up close with the enemies, for which I recommend you use the last victory. So while you're constantly inflicting elements, you can also keep healing as well. Notice that this one will only drop as water DPS, but since we have a blood rage technique, all our weapons will deal physical damage and inflict bleed. So it doesn't matter what DPS a weapon is, it will always inflict bleed. The Sword of Courage as of any bleed build is absolutely amazing as whenever you inflict bleed, you will shoot up to 2 projectiles at nearby enemies. Since you get 20% damage per second while polarized, all the projectiles will also get increased in damage as well, making this the best longsword for this build. The Glory of Dawn, Oblivion, the Illuminated Edge, these are some of the best weapons you can use for this build. Great Swords are the only weapon type in the game that can charge up your weapon techniques while you're getting hit. It works extremely well when you are using your Northern Technique, which is your Beyblade kind of move. Your attack will almost never get interrupted because of its high armor value, but the move doesn't have any invincibility like the Longswords, so you can get hit and take damage while doing this move. Since you can charge up your Weapon Technique while getting hit, if you have a good amount of healing, you can spam Weapon Techniques on your Greatswords almost infinitely. The Shatterplate Hammer is also amazing as you can breach enemies even in the Exalted Towers nice and quickly. The weapons which I use for most of my runs is a Dreath Wrath Blade. I got bonus breach damage during Rampage. It also has the greater blessing of power which is around 30% bonus damage whenever I defeat a marked enemy and finally 43% crit chance on my Northern Technique. This makes sure I'm always at 100% crit chance whenever I use my weapon techniques. This makes sure I never lose any sort of healing. And for the secondary weapon I can choose anything that I want. I either like to run the hammers or another great sword as well could work. But you can choose whatever you like. Make sure on your weapons you have crit chance as much as possible. For the charm, we use the Matrix Star. If you don't have this because you don't own the DLC, then just go for the Lion's Talisman, it will be just as good. For the amulet, we use the Earthminder's Crest to gain added breach damage if our vitality is higher than any other attribute. For the rings, first we use the Mark of the Red Armor. This works best overall for any weapon that you may wish to use, especially useful if you are planning to run with dual blades. For the second ring, we use the Weird Ring. This will give us bonus damage to bosses based on our breach damage value. We are sitting at around 200% breach damage. With this ring, we'll be doing 200% bonus damage to bosses, which is pretty neat. For the banner, I have kept it to the Plague Pennant for added element power and for the Lifestone, I have kept it to the Archon's tier, just so we can hit the enemies harder with our attacks. Now let's have a look at the Augments. First Augment we get is the Rubicon. 
This again will give us more breach damage if our vitality is higher than 3000. If you are planning to run with dual blades, remove this augment for the force barrier. Next we have Glamour. This will give us more damage per element on the enemy. The main augment for this entire build is once again Void Shell. Since our crit chance will almost always be at 100%, you will be gaining over health with every hit. Paradise for more weapon tech charge on critical hits. Constantly hitting crits will stack up these bonuses. The Divine Conduit to gain more Archon Free Charge when you're hit. This effect also stacks if you're constantly getting hit. Rift once again for added damage per element on the enemy. Then Focus for more over health on crits. Then we have Dauntless. Since we have a lot of vitality focused gear, our resistances are also going to be above 45% on all of them. This will help us in getting a polarity attack charged really quickly. It may not show properly on your stat sheet, but I do feel it will charging faster with this augment equipped. For the last augment, we have Scourge for quick shield charge. Make sure on all your gear pieces you have a good amount of element power and some with element duration. Add an over health gain if you feel you're dying pretty quickly. Here's a look at the skill tree. Everything is pretty much standard. Add in weapon timing attacks as you can heal with them and you also can consume with it if you wanted to. If you want better healing then go fully into recovery. This will boost your healing from the last victory jewel blades as well. Here's a look at the ascension powers in the stat sheet. That is it for the build guys, it was truly a fun build to play with. I'm really keeping away from the consumed builds, otherwise if I went for the most damaging builds then almost all of them will be consumed builds, and there is no fun in that. For this build, great swords and hammers really shine the best. They can hit the enemy super hard while you're polarized and can make the bleed ticks go for really high numbers. The long sword sword of courage is absolutely amazing with this build. It benefits so much from the will of the unbroken shard. Since you launch physical damage projectiles on inflicting bleed, and you gain 20% damage per second, all those projectiles will hit every enemy really hard. Your weapons will only inflict bleed if you are in Rampage. Best way to enter Rampage super easily is by always starting your fight with your shield throw and explosive wave. Since they hit a lot of enemies, you will enter Rampage super quickly with this move. Or if you have your greatsword with the ability to enter Rampage with the Northern Technique, it is also best to use that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the build. The damage is amazing and if you want, feel free to use Consume if you need it. The damage can also go really high with Consume. Plus, Consume will also heal you while you're polarized as well. What do you guys think of the new shards on Bulwark? Comment down below. I would love to hear from you all. I will catch you all next time.